Well, now in just a week from now, the world's most important conference on international security starts in the German city of Munich. And I am pleased to be able to welcome now the head of the Munich Security Conference and former German ambassador to the United States, Wolfgang Ischinger. Uh, Mr. Ischinger, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure. Good morning. Now, now, I'd like to begin with one of the big stories today. Um, as we've heard, France set to oppose Germany on Nord Stream. Macron also canceling his joint appearance at this year's Munich Security Conference. How worried are you that cracks are forming in the relationship between France and Germany right now? Well, let's, uh, let's keep the facts uh, straight. Uh, we were planning, I had invited... Um, President Macron and Chancellor Merkel to appear together. Actually, I tried that already a year ago. A year ago, it didn't work because there was a German problem. Chancellor Merkel didn't have uh, a government fully formed uh, last February. So this plan fell through at the time. Uh, I was hoping very much that this year we could go forward. And um, uh, uh, a week ago, actually a week ago, not yesterday, uh, the Elysee uh, told us that uh, President Macron was not going to be able to come as planned. And the uh, reasons that were given to us uh, had to do with the so need of the President of France to entertain his uh, national dialogue and to worry about uh, domestic issues rather than go abroad for this particular conference. So for us, this is uh, unfortunate, but um, uh, not a big tragedy. But, but, I mean, what do you think it says, though, about the state of affairs here in Europe? Because, I mean, you had previously welcomed this as a way of showing that Europe is not falling apart. Um, you highlighted the domestic issues in both countries. Were you wrong? Uh, well, no. I mean, look, France, even if President Macron isn't going to speak himself uh, in Munich, we will have plenty of other senior representatives of the French government in Munich to uh, explain French positions. Um, there will be a huge American delegation, uh, congressional delegation. There will be half a dozen German ministers, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the purpose, which, I, which is important to me, the purpose to demonstrate in Munich that the European Union is alive and kicking, that purpose can still be uh, maintained. Uh, we will have plenty of European speakers from Germany, from France, from a number of other uh, important European countries, including the current uh, Romanian uh, presidency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my, for me, it's very important that we demonstrate, especially to the Anglo-Saxon community, that the impression that may be created elsewhere, that because of Brexit, the European integration project is about to crumble, that that's wrong. Actually, po popular support for the European Union in most countries is up. Not down. But, but if we drill down a little bit deeper into the security situation here in Europe, I mean, there's been much talk about a common European defense, especially with the U.S. calling the NATO alliance into question recently. What is your take on current efforts? Because, I mean, Europe doesn't seem to be in too big of a rush to make any dramatic moves. Is it missing an opportunity? Well, if you ask me personally, I think we could do even a lot more than uh, what, what is currently being done to strengthen, uh, you know, indigenous European military capabilities, especially in the conventional uh, area. But let's also be fair. Uh, there are important initiatives. Take, for example, we, uh, you, you raised the Franco-German uh, uh, relationship. Uh, there is now uh, on the drawing board a new uh, Franco-German fighting uh, fighter aircraft, uh, which has just been agreed, uh, that is a very, very important, uh, you know, symbolic, but also uh, uh, substantial uh, new initiatives uh, in the direction of strengthening uh, and pooling 
European military capabilities. But I, but I would be the first to agree, we could even do a lot more, especially we in Germany, where uh, the defense effort is not, I think, what it should be. How about also when it comes to the defense of multilateralism, just, just generally speaking, you know, that rules-based order that was um, established in the wake of World War II institutions like the UN, the WTO, for example. I, I mean, it's come under attack by populism politics around the world. Um, Merkel speaking recently about the importance of preserving it. How do you see the prospect for, for making meaningful changes to address current challenges and, and really supporting that world order? What's your take? Well, I think, uh, I think this is a key challenge for uh, the entire European Union. Uh, if there is one important bloc in the world that relies on a free um, and, and, and open and rules-based international order, it is surely the European Union. And I think it's, it's one of the main uh, tasks for all of us in the in the EU to try to uh, put together, as has been uh, said, a kind of an alliance of multilateralists around the world. We're not alone. Uh, there is Canada, there is Australia, uh, there is a, a, a good number of other important countries out there um, that, ha that share our interest in a global free trade system, that share our interests in strong international institutions, that share our interests in a rules-based international system. So I think we need to work on that. Uh, we need to create partnerships and alliances. But the EU, I believe, has the calling uh, and, and, and has the power, actually. We represent 500 million people. We are the strongest trading and economic bloc in the world, if you uh, if, if, if one uh, looks at uh, current uh, data, uh, we have a lot of uh, economic um, and soft power also, and that's uh, where we should apply it, building multilateralism, rebuilding multilateralism in a world that's fraying uh, in the margins. And given that, um, Ambassador Ishinger, just briefly before we go, because we know that, um, you know, you will have high-ranking representatives there, of course, at the Munich Security Conference, including from the big three military powers, the U.S., Russia, China, which we have really seen um, redefining the, their roles very much in the world recently. What is your key message to them? Well, I think that it would be a, a major disaster for the global future if we, st if we really allow a situation between the big powers to develop that would look like, you know, classic great power rivalry, zero-sum games. I think we have, um, we have uh, enough in common between uh, even Russia and the United States, between Europe and China and everybody else to... Um, uh, to, to try to work together to put cooperation, to put integration uh, above uh, the kind of rivalry which seems to be the motto of 2019. And we will need to talk about that next weekend in Munich. We'll have some pretty tough, hard talk, I hope, uh, in order to clarify what the priorities of responsible leadership need to be in 2019. And we very much look forward to seeing how those talks progress. We want to thank you very much. Um, Wolfgang Ischinger, head of the Munich Security Conference and former German ambassador to the United States. We very much appreciate it. Thank you very much.